Hello guys, welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today I'm going to show you how I'm going to tie some sawasser tang to these bloody bricks because I've already made this video and it didn't work so I'm having to do the start again. <laughs> right, so guys, today's video is going to be about me tying sawasser tang to our tanks. I'm going to give you a sneak peek because you're here. If you want to see more like this, please like. And guys, today right, I'm going to do something different. Um, I'm going to do a giveaway, right, but I want you guys to like the video for it today, right? So uh, once we get, say, 500 likes on this video, 500 is a lot. But considering I have, what, 43,000 subscribers, I think 500 likes in a video isn't too much to ask for, right? So today, guys, if you want to be in with a chance of winning a packet of Nettle Mix, that's the shrimp food that I make myself. If you want to be in with a chance of winning it, right, please hit that like button because I know for sure there will be, what, a couple of thousand people watching this video? If you want to be in with a chance of winning some free shrimp food, then please just like the bloody Let's video. Let's go. Get some bricks. We're going to grab one of these buckets because uh, we have a plan for these bricks. Let's see, right, so I'm going to take you out of the back of my house. It's actually very cold today in Norway. It's uh, probably about minus five outside. Oh God, it's freezing out here. If you guys can see, oh, way down there, you can see the river, you can see it's actually frozen over, right? So this is a moving river and it's uh, frozen over completely, right? So we have bricks here. Just don't mind the recycling that we do here. We recycle everything. Uh, today I'm probably gonna use about two of these bricks. So I like to use these ones. Doesn't matter if they have a crack in them. Anything like spiders and stuff will be long gone out here, but let's put them in this uh, container. Anyway, God, is this one stuck? Oh, got all this stuff stuck to it. Brick was stuck. Yeah, so we're gonna put these in some water, I think, in the house, just to heat them up a bit, because uh, they are absolutely frozen. I don't want to put them in the tanks like that, right? And if there is any spiders still alive, I doubt there will be. And um, it'll give them a chance to get off and we can rehome them. Okay, shrimp farm, here is our brick. Here, it's uh, been sitting in that tub for a little while in lukewarm water just to make sure it's warm before I put it into a tank. Um, I've given it a good rinse. There's no spiders in it. Um, and the question I get asked a lot about these kind of things is, how do I know the shrimp's safe? Well, I worked in a factory in Scotland that made bricks a long, long time ago. And guys, most bricks are just terracotta, right, which is red clay and sand mixed together then heated in an oven to make bricks, right, so clay is actually safe for shrimp tanks. Most of our substrates will be made from clay. Akadama is probably a red clay, right, so uh, how we're going to do this, guys, is I'm going to use black thread here. And the way I do it, guys, is I like to just tie the thread on somewhere. And we already have uh, holes here, so let's see if we can poke this through one of the holes. Doubling it up, see if that helps pushing it through. It might not. Or we can use uh, a set of stainless steel tweezers here because these are quite long, right? So how you do this is up to you. But this is just the easiest way. Look, easy peasy. And uh, pull it through. And I'm just going to do a couple of overhand knots, right? So... Let's get you over here, right, so we're tying knots like this. I'm trying to not get my hands in the way of the camera so you guys can actually see what I'm doing today. A couple overhand knots, it doesn't have to be mega tight either because this is just to anchor the sabwasser tongue to, to the brick until the sabwasser tongue starts to stick to it, right, so like so. I'm just going to quickly Tidy up this little edge here, you see, like this. Ta da! And then, guys, this is the good part is we're actually going to add our sawasser tang to the brick. This is almost a litre of sawasser tang. This is a decent sized brick, right? I don't want to wait forever for the sawasser tang to grow, right? So, let's see what is going to be the best way. I'm right handed, so we have the brick in this orientation. And let's put like a quarter of it on at a time and see how we get on. Subwasser tongue. If you're from Germany, you're probably like, no, it's not called Subwasser tongue, it's called Suss Wasser tongue. There's maybe enough here for the two bricks because it looks like it's quite a lot, right? So, uh, I'm actually going to go around it like this. Let me see. Let's 
caught up in something here. So the good thing about this is it actually has holes in the brick, right? So you lift it up and you just go around to, to secure it around. It doesn't need a lot, guys. And you really, really don't want to pull this tight because sawasa tongue, uh, you will cut through it, more or less, right? So don't go too tight. That's only two wraps. Good enough. Third one for luck. So dropping it. And then we're going to put the rest on here. And so... This is probably more than enough for what we need to do, right? Let's put you on here. Let's do the same again. Put your fingers in the brick. Hold the brick, lift your sawasa tongue, and go around in circles. I'm going to go around this a few times, guys, just to make sure it's well on. I don't want to put it in the tank and then it floats off, right? So get it well on. If you want, you can go the other way as well, but I don't like to go the other way because I don't want the sawasa tang. Um, I don't want there to be lines of thread across the front of the brick, right? You'll see what I mean in a second when I turn this around, right? So, a few more wraps, not mega tight. Right, guys, and when we're going to finish this, we're going to finish this on the other side, right? So, we're going to leave ourselves enough room like this. See how much we've left here. Because we're actually going to pass this side here back through the brick and we're going to tie it off. Right, before I used to make the mistake of finishing it on the top and it always looked a mess, right? So, do the same thing as we've done before. Get your sawasa tongue, cut your line, cut your thread, double it up like we did before. Double it up because it always makes it easier to thread through stuff if you double it up. In theory. <laughs> So we've already doubled up underneath, as we said before, you'll see, like this, see all the lines, turn it upside down. This won't squish or destroy the sawasa tongue, little bits might fall off, but it won't destroy it guys, trust me. Right, and we're going to pick a hole here, and I'm just going to go for the first one here, and pass it straight through, you see it? This is going to be our anchor point. Try and save all these little bits. Where did I drop it? There it is. It's going to be our anchor point. And here, you don't need to go mega, mega tight again. All you need to do is uh, do a little knot, right? So, you can see the line is up here. This is probably mega, mega hard for you guys to see, right? But here's the line. Here's the line going through the, the brick. And we're simply going to go around it a couple of times and tie it into an overhand knot, right? Again, you don't want it to be mega, mega tight. See it? Pull it down itself with a cinch it. Cinch! <laughs> right, if you can, pass it through and do a loop. Like you're doing with your shoelace, right? So it won't come undone. Alright guys, I eventually did like a little overhand slip knot here. Which I'll probably do um, on the next one as well. I'm not going to trim this because I just don't want this to fail, right? So, so it looks like... Just a little bit flat because uh, we've uh, had the bricks in on it. All these bits that are falling off guys here, keep them because uh, I actually grew all my sawasa tang from little bits like this that I got in a shrimp shipment before a long, long time ago, right? So, uh, the other thing I didn't mention here is when you're doing this kind of stuff, anything with plants, right? You can still hear me. Uh, make sure you have a little bottle of water like this, aquarium water, and just give it a little squirt like this every so often. Alright, so we'll put this one to the side and then we'll start the next one. We'll put them put them into the tank. Let's get the next one done. Make sure I give it a couple of wraps from the middle. Let me see. This line is very tight. Alright, so in a hammock knot you go... What is it guys? You go you hold the loop like this, then you loop it into itself a couple of times. And then, I think, if I remember how to do this correctly, you go above the knot and loop it once more. Is it on the inside? I can't remember. It's going to be a hell of a loose though. Does it need to be tightened up? No, let's see. Loop through the top. 
I then pulled tight. I think, let's see if this worked. I bet it hasn't worked, but you get to try it. I think it has actually worked. It's actually tightening up on itself here, you see it? I can't remember exactly what way to pull the hammock knot to make it tight, but <laughs> it has actually worked. You see the V here, you can just see it in my finger. I can't remember which way to pull it to make it tight right and the thread is so weak I don't want it to snap, let me see so this way yeah, I think it's that way actually, see it tightening up little hammock knot, isn't that cool? right so on this side here just to secure it, right see if you were in a hammock here you'd go over and loop it through itself right and then you'd take something like a twig just as an example going way 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 off the video topic here <laughs> you take your twig, just say these are the twi this is the twig put it through the, the loop and then pull that little knot tight, you see it? and that stops uh, your hammock knot coming undone until you want to go home and then you pull this out here pull this tight and then you can pull the hammock knot apart right, but we're not going to pull it apart, though, right? this will stay here forever let's cut off this loose part I can see it Hopefully it's tight enough guys, that knot isn't mega tight but it's probably tight enough just to hold all the sawasa tang in place, that not look good. So there you go, that's how we're doing our sawasa tang bricks in 2020. Yeah, that's how we're doing it right, so next the thing you will see is uh, we're going to put this into the tank, but they're not looking good, this will puff up again and it will grow awesomely. Alright guys, let's get this thing here into the tank very easy to hold because uh, of all these holes in it very easy to hold because of all the holes <laughs> oh. but that was uh, very hard for me to do right so this is a little bit awkward I'll try and get the best picture I can for you guys there is baby shrimp in here but um, I've uh, surveyed the area that the brick is going to go and I can't see any babies here right so we're going to put it just there Let's get this in the tank before I drop the effing thing. Right, so there is floating plants in here. Let's uh, squiggle them all out the way. Let's put you down in the center there, little Mr. Brick. I'm still looking for babies and I can't see any. Let's just give it a little scoosh like this. Give anything underneath a chance to get out of the way and then, boom, it's in there, right? So. This will fill up absolutely awesomely in this tank. I know there's a lot of glare, but I'll show you the bottom one as well. Let's go back just a tiny bit. These are home to my uh, red fancy tigers. I've had about three batches of baby shrimp in here, so this is the reason for me getting more plants in here as well, because I see a lot of them in this uh, moss here. And uh, as the plants grow, this... Uh, Fluffy algae is slowly disappearing. You guys can probably see it from previous videos that is disappearing a little bit over time, but the plants are growing better, right? So this is what it looks like from above. All that lovely floating mass. Red root floater, Salvinia, as always. Let's put the bottom one in as well, shall we? Shall we, shrimp fram? Right, so can I sit like this? Yes, I can just, oh my god, it's like, it's like I'm doing the splits, guys. Alright, let's see, let's move the lights, a little bit of light glare here as well. Shrimp room. It is a working shrimp room, right, so we're going to have all these little issues with glare and lights and whatnot. Let me quickly grab my mega long tweezers. Guys, these are mega mega helpful for doing stuff like this right so I don't want to have my hand more in the tank than need be right so look at this look see what I mean lovely galaxy there where are all the other galaxies hmm hmm yeah so let's uh, move some stuff here first especially these just these little things here that big rock can stay I might move it to a little bit to the side but the little things can be moved just out the way enough so we can uh, get some sabasa tongue in here. That, this moss is actually going very nice in here, you see? Sometimes the moss grows awesomely and sometimes it just grows meh, like this one over here, look. Dead center of the screen, meh. It's kind of yellow. 
This one's nice and green, so let's move some of this stuff. Get you out of the way. Guys, I think, uh, no, I was going to say this is for Sidons, but it's not for Sidons. I want to show you what I think is for Sidons, and you tell me if it is for Sidons or not, right? Can't see if I have any in this tank. Well, I'll have a, l a look at another tank where I think I have for Sidons. Is this it here? In the middle, is that for Sidons? Let me know in the comment section below. Because, guys, I have, my, my tanks are full of moss, right? And I never know what is what in my tanks. Because I'm not really a plant person, but I would I would like to know what they are. Let me see. Just making sure there's no bambinos. Is there any galaxy babies? Would be nice to see something. All right, let's get this uh, thing into here. This thing. Take your time. You don't want to smash the tank. And yes, guys, I have actually smashed a tank putting a rock in it before. So really. Honestly, take your time. Let's add this here. Let's see, can, can we get a screenshot? No. Take my time, make sure there's nothing underneath. And there you go. Isn't that nice? So there's no thread on the top, just apart from we, where we've attached it. But this is a tongue, I'll puff it like this, I'll puff it into a big ball like this, and it'll grow all over this. Lots of people don't like this in a tank because uh, you get people that are like aquascaping gardeners that think this looks horrific. Right? I, I am just into it for the shrimp, guys. I like plants, but I'm more into it for the shrimp, right? So I know this will be a good place for shrimp babies because if, if, uh, if you go back and look at some of my older videos, you'll see I've bred thousands and thousands and thousands of shrimp with uh, tanks with subwasser tongue in it, right? So anyway, guys. If you have enjoyed today's video, then please leave a like and subscribe if you haven't already. Once, As I said, once we get to 500 likes on the video, because I know more than 500 people will watch this video, uh, please leave a like and I'll do a giveaway. All right? Have an awesome weekend and I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Bye. Whoop.